News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and 98.3 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. St. Patrick Hospital's CEO responds to a vote of no confidence. Good morning, everyone. Montana Morning, it's Tuesday, March 21st, 2017. We're into our second day of spring now. Hope things are going well for you. It's clear and 40 in Missoula right now. We have a 50-50 chance we'll get a rainstorm later on today. Our newscast this morning, sponsored by Dig It Excavating. They bring 30 years of excellence to your job. Call 214-4292. One of our top stories this morning. In a recent article in the Missoulian newspaper, it was revealed that the medical staff at Providence St. Patrick Hospital had held a secret vote of no confidence in the hospital's management. KGVO News reached out to the now chief executive officer of the hospital, Joyce Dombrowski, for her reaction to the vote and what it means to her personally. We're having constructive, open, and frank dialogue with medical staff and its leadership, and we're responding to feedback. While there's no escaping the challenging in health care across all of the United States, Providence is committed to supporting and growing Providence St. Patrick Hospital's distinction as the tertiary center of excellence in Montana. Dombrowski was asked what she and the leadership at St. Pat's are doing to restore faith and management at the hospital. We have increased the frequency of meetings and the dialogue with our medical staff and the board, and we are re-examining our long-term physician engagement plan. That plan is need, needs to be done collaboratively. We have acknowledged that there are no quick fixes. These are complicated and complex issues, and it will take a thoughtful, concerted effort on the part of all of us, working together, as I said, collaboratively to achieve resolution. And as the number two employer of the city, the University of Montana being number one, Dombrowski was asked how she's reassuring her employees about their futures at the hospital. I held in-person employee forums last week as part of our Spirit Week celebration. Those included all employees, and I'm communicating regularly with them. I want staff to know that Providence St. Pat's continues to lead Montana hospitals in clinical and quality outcomes. We are proud of the innovative models and advancements that place us in the highest levels of care nationally. Our hospital and providers and physicians are esteemed and valued for such excellent care. That hasn't changed. It was announced last fall that Jeff Fee, the CEO at Providence St. Patrick Hospital at the time, would be stepping down at the end of the year. No replacement would be named. However, Dobrowski confirmed that she is now the CEO. A man who admitted to bringing 40 pounds of them into Butte in 2015 has been sentenced to 25 federal prison. The Missoulian reports 33-year-old Lester died was sentenced last week in Zula after earlier pleading guilty to conspiracy to distribute methamphetamine and possessing a firearm to further that goal. I told U.S. District Judge Dana Christensen that he wasn't a bad person, but that he made some bad decisions. Christensen noted Oxendine's criminal record in North Carolina includes convictions for forgery, identity theft, drug dealing, and assault. After his arrest, Oxendine told police he brought more than $640,000 in methamphetamine into the Butte area during a five-month period after moving there that summer from the Bakken oil fields. Warm weather brought flooding to northeastern Montana over the weekend, and at least one waterway reached record depths. The Billings Gazette reports Big Muddy Creek near Antelope peaked at 17.84 feet Monday, a new record nearly six feet above the flood stage. Tanja Franzen with the National Weather Service says the stream's previous record flood depth of 17.37 feet was set in 1982. The Poplar River also flooded in Roosevelt County, rising from about 3.5 feet to uh, a peak of roughly 15.5 feet on Saturday. Ice on the river had started breaking up with temperatures recently beginning to warm up. Franzen says flooding was reported on several major roadways, including Highway 2 in Roosevelt and Valley Counties, Highway 248, and Highway 13. 30-year-old Patrick McGrath is being held on $50,000 bail after being charged with three felony counts of assault with a weapon following a scuffle in which he cut three people with a knife. Deputy Missoula County Attorney Ryan Mickelson said the incident occurred on Sunday night directly across from the Missoula County Courthouse on Broadway, which houses the Missoula County Sheriff's Office. The defendant in this case pulled a knife on two strangers who were unarmed in a vehicle, charged with the vehicle. One of those individuals was cut by the knife. They then attempted to immobilize the defendant. A third bystander came by to help. He also ended up getting cut by the knife. Mickelson emphasized to Judge Landy Holloway what might have happened if McGrath had not been subdued by bystanders. And eventually, the sheriff's deputies responded when they heard the commotion across the street from their office. This was a very significant offense, and had they not been able to immobilize him, 
vandalism could have resulted in significant injury, if not death, to these individuals. It appears that he was highly inebriated at the time, so the state would be requesting a bond at $100,000. Judge Holloway set bail at $50,000 in order McGrath to appear again on April 4th. 31-year-old Katie Garding of Stevensville has spent the last several years in the Montana State Prison after having been convicted of a hit-and-run death of Bronson Parsons in East Missoula back in 2008. The Montana Innocence Project has continued to work on Garding's behalf. Clinical and Legal Director Larry Manch explains. We allege that she was not properly represented at counsel, and we allege that there was that the state had withheld important medical information and should have provided that to the defense before the trial. And then we allege that there was newly discovered evidence of innocence that established her innocence. Match pointed out that a reconstruction of the accident scene was never produced at Garding's original trial. We had a bunch of well-known and well-established experts conduct a reconstruction. They all came to the same conclusion. It was not physically possible that a vehicle could strike Mr. Parsons, carry or throw the body over 90 feet, and come away without any damage to it. They estimated the speed of the striking vehicle at at least 35 miles per hour and probably even faster. Match said due to last-minute motions last week, the next court appearance could be within 60 to 90 days. Until then, Garding was transported back to the Montana State Prison. There's a congressional election coming up May 25th. Three candidates currently out barnstorming to gather votes. At Republican Greg Gianforte and Democrat Rob Quist have big-name parties to help promote their message. Libertarian Mark Wicks has, was picked at a nominating convention Saturday, March 11th, nearly a week after his competitors. And now he's out explaining how he differs from the crowd. With Gianforte, there's a lot of stuff I agree on. But I think he goes a little too far right. I'm a little more friendly to some of the alternative communities than I think he will be. With Quist, I'm not in favor of sanctuary cities. I think we need to know who's coming into this country. I also know that immigrants are some of the best people we have in this country, but we got to know who's here. Wick says the short time span of a special election makes it even more difficult to run a successful third-party campaign still, is using the outcome of the last general election as part of his campaign. This campaign's a little different. You know, usually we don't know what the balance of power is going to be after Election Day. It's all up in there. Every congressional seat's up in there. But this time we know what the balance of power is going to be. It doesn't matter if there's one more R there's or one more D. It's not going to change the balance of power. Wick said he would most likely caucus with Republicans if elected. Our news talk time now, 612. News talk. KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Mostly cloudy to cloudy skies today with a chance of showers. Daytime highs will be in the mid-50s. Tonight, showers likely with our low temperatures in the mid-30s. Scattered showers Wednesday. Dry skies on Thursday. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13.